uh, with radio frequency, this is something that people do quite commonly. I'm going to show you a garden variety radio frequency ablation of the spine, the lumbar spine. And we'll talk about uh, radio frequency in general, just a snippet about how this is the same and different than most of the radio frequency. Whenever we have radio frequency ablation, most of it is just ablation uh, that is standard or conventional. This provides an, an elliptical. Around the end of the needle, this is an elliptical area of ablation. Some of the recent advancements have uh, turned into large volume ablation. So an uh, example of that is cool RF, where the large ablation zone is, is around the tip. It's an ellipse, uh, and it's around the tip of the needle rather than along the axis of the needle. So the large volume lesions uh, compared to standard. Standard gives you about um, 170 uh, cubic millimeters of ablation zone. Some of the uh, other modified versions of that include the protruded RF, so where the needle comes in and the, the tine protrudes out, that can give you volumes up to about 230. Let's go ahead and get my eye in. The 230 cubic millimeters. The large volume ablation zones will give you uh, anywhere between about 470 roughly up to 600 cubic millimeters. And so uh, just like most things, especially in RF, I mean, size matters a whole lot in terms of the ability to ablate. And so what I'll show you today is this is uh, a multi-tined ablation zone. This is not a protruding ablation. This is a multi-tined needle. So whenever we deploy this, the central post of the needle is here and there's two tines that come out like this. So on the distal tip of the needle, they come out. And so this produces an ablation zone that's a, about 600 cubic millimeters. So a very large ablation zone. So give me a picture right here. Good. So the technique, picture here, between the junction between the spiroarticular process and the transverse process, this is the target for the medial branch of the dorsal ramus and the lumbar spine. So we're going to target that right here. And this is not much of a difficult uh, procedure to be, able to, to be able to target this. The issue is, is parallel versus perpendicular. And most of the time with standard RF, you have to come up parallel to the, the medial branch of the dorsal ramus as the mammalo accessory ligament runs over the top of it. And this, you can come in just directly perpendicular to it. So the ablation zone comes out from the distal tip of the needle, and this is uh, 600 cubic millimeters. And I'm going to ask that we uh, take an image here, picture. And so this is a, a junction between the transverse process, superior articular process, meter branch of dorsal ramus, that's where the, it lives. You can see the two tines that, that are protruded. I'm going to change the orientation of these shoot that to right along the osseous portion, the curvilinear portion of the junction between those two structures. That's where the medial branch of the dorsal ramus lives. This is a large ablation zone. We know that this, this is a, a very good spot and it's just that simple. So this is, you don't, it's not required to go parallel to the medial branch. You can go perpendicular to it. And so that's all uh, that we're trying to show here. Um, one of the portions of this, if we could get a close up of the needle, that would be great. So I'm going to use this. Here is the distal tip of this needle. So this is a center post needle with two uh, the protruding electrodes. The ablation zone comes out from here and is a large ablation zone like this. So I'm going to show we uh, cooked some chicken this morning. And so this is these are large volume ablation zones. So this is a bipolar burn with two needles here. And you can see how big these ablation zones are. And this is uh, using the same suspended technique. This, the pivotal article comes from Sedinio and the measuring the volume measured between uh, 467 and 601 uh, cubic millimeters. And this is uh, m m uh, the same technique, a suspended technique uh, and this is uh, just garden variety chicken you get from the grocery store to demonstrate the size of the ablation zone. And so this is something that can be used for the spine. It can be used for uh, really excels for the joints. As you guys know, the ablation zones for things like the shoulder, the hip, the knee, 
uh, you really need to have a large volume of ablation zones to really get the consistently good results. Otherwise, with conventional RF, the lesions tend to be small, and there's a, a large variation. For example, the genicular nerves have a very large variation, runs with the neurovascular bundle. And for those of you who do things like uh, angio, you know the genicular arteries have a large variation. No surprise, the genicular nerves do too. So the larger the ablation zone, the better and more consistent the results. And with that, going to open up to questions and comments. One to, let me make, parenthetically, let me make a couple of comments more about the needle. So we'll, the uh, deployment mechanism is proximal here. This can be retracted and it can be deployed. And it's what's happening is when you retract it, the two small tines go back into the hub of the needle. And so this is controlled from the, the proximal portion here. And as you deploy it, it goes out. And whenever you inject, this becomes watertight. And you inject through the lure lock hub here proximally, it will come out uh, to the side of the needle. So this is a medication, the anesthetic, uh, the steroid, whatever you inject through here will come out the side of the needle. So this is all controlled through uh, tines that run the entire length of this needle proximally. Uh, the other interesting portion of this is that this is multi-beveled. So this is a, a diamond tip, and a diamond tip means uh, four notches. A trocar tip is three facets, and it has the fourth facet that's the very distal tip of this needle. So this, out of all the needles I use, this is maybe the sharpest of all, and it has a really nice fourth facet that makes this a diamond tip, and this is quite sharp. So these uh, are all unique features that I don't know exist in, in other needles. So uh, with that, we will show one other thing. Okay, I'm gonna take this out. This is an 18 gauge burn right here. And see the conventional burn as the needle would fit here. And the burn zone is around and it ellipse around the needle. It doesn't extend distally beyond the tip of the needle very much. And as a comparative view, these are the ablation zones of the high volume ablation zones. So this is not only larger, it's much larger. So everyone could do the math here. Conventional has about 170 cubic millimeters. The large volume has anywhere from 470 to 601 cubic millimeters. So these are substantially different. Okay, I'd like to open it up for questions and comments. Questions from the audience here? Uh, yeah, Doug, yeah, the, this is Glenn, uh, quite a remarkable difference in the size of the uh, ablation zone, wow. Uh, comments from the, uh, questions from the, uh, from the audience here? Yeah, please, go ahead. It looks like the, the vegan like it's square. Okay. It did. Uh, the question from the audience was, uh, looks like the bipolar lesion uh, looks like a, well, looks like a square, or maybe, a, maybe more of a sphere rather than a lip, ellipse. Yeah, so the bipolar lesion, these are they're trimmed up a little bit whenever we slice the chicken. Yeah. Let's see here. So the bipolar lesion tends to be trimmed a little bit. What this is, is these are an elliptical uh, ablation zone. So at the distal tip of the needle, what you get is something that's a little bit like a wide-based tornado. So this comes out. And the ablation zone looks like a little bit like this around the, the tip of the needle. And so what you get with these two put together is kind of an oval. And what you see here is the reason it looks square is because it's been trimmed up right there. I see. Okay. Slicing the chicken. And so this is uh, one of the, um, but this, uh, this is kind of designed to give you the volume, overall ablation volume difference. And here's, again, the ablation volume difference in the ones that are the single needle burns between the 18 gauge right here and the two uh, smaller Nimbus needles with the large ablation volume. Okay. And these so, are also the time to do this, uh, the, the time is standard RF, this is 90 seconds. So 80 for 90, 80 degrees C for 90 seconds. 
And so this is not any additional time. As you know, the volume equals temp times time and the tissue and the impedance that you ablate within. So this is, um, these are standard needles that can be used with any RF machine. In fact, I use these with, uh, we have two different RF machines and I, I can use these with both of those. So it doesn't require any uh, new, unusual type of um, ablation equipment. Although um, Stratus is coming out with his own ablation system, his, his own box, which is uh, quite impressive. I've seen previews of that. It doesn't require any new, um, anything to use. You can use this with the, with the striker box. You can use it uh, with the neurotherm box um, and it, with, the, with pretty much anything we have now. So and that's with the standard probes uh, then? Um, exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, question I had, so the perpendicular approach uh, uh, you'll have to take because of you're creating such a large lesion, is that reason why? So the perpendicular approach, uh, you know, as we know, Paul Dreyfus did some of the early work on this, and we take a parallel approach to get along the axis of the nerve. So you get along the axis of the nerve parallel to try to get to maximize the ablation. Larger needle, 18 gauge, parallel to the nerve, uh, seems to give better results when you use standard RF. Now we don't really need to go parallel to it. I think some of the practitioners find this hard, difficult to get it kind of aligned along the parallel course yeah. of that nerve, especially in some of the more difficult places like the thoracic spine. Right. What this is, this is designed to be pinpoint target. Some of the people use a gun barrel approach, uh, just directly down the needle. Um, you know, I don't use that technique, but some people like to just pinpoint and drive down perpendicular. This makes it a more easily accessible technique. You can go down, you don't have to worry about the orientation. You don't have to come in 30 degrees, for example, along parallel to the, and especially in, in patients with a big lumbosacral lordosis, it's hard to come up to some of the upper lumbar levels to get down and in uh, along that lordosis to make it parallel. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just come in perpendicular, get a, a large volume lesion, and hopefully consistent and excellent reproducible results. Excellent, excellent. Other questions here? Uh, please go ahead. Uh, can you talk about the cost? Okay, can you go ahead and, um, sorry, it helps to, for him to hear it as well. Can you talk about the cost difference between this and a conventional? Uh, Say again, Glenn. Oh, uh, he was saying, uh, can you uh, talk about the cost difference between uh, this uh, versus conventional? Yeah, so this is a little bit more than conventional. So some of the needles like this will be sold you know, it's it's the rush to the the uh, basement on these. I mean, ten to fifteen dollars per needle. This is more expensive than that. Um, really, the a comparable needle to this is a Cool RF because the only other uh, ablation device besides this that can make a large ablation zone uh, is six hundred cubic millimeters is Cool RF. This is about ten times less expensive than the cool RF. So this is not cool. We, there's no water used. There's no setup for the water, the delivery. Uh, the needle is not top heavy. This is sharp. And what happens whenever you de deploy the tines is this secures itself in soft tissue. So this has a different feel to it. And this is for uh, value in terms of cost and what you get for that cost, the value of it. This is uh, by far the cheapest way to produce a very big, large volume lesion. Yes, this is more expensive than conventional RF, but not much more. It's just uh, about getting the appropriate size for the best possible performance and the lowest possible cost. Excellent, excellent. Uh, like another question here, uh, please go ahead. Okay, uh, the question was, since you're getting such a large anterior lesion from the uh, distal tip, when you do genicular, are you using the traditional anatomical landmarks where you're 60% across the distal femur and 50% across the proximal tibia? Um, yeah, Don, we're using the same exact techniques for that. Uh, we use a modified version of this. I don't want to get into it too much. We, use, uh, we do 14 ablation zones across. We uh, affectionately call this our carpet bombing technique for the genicular sensory nerves of the knee, but we use the same techniques. 60% of the cross for the superior medial lateral genicular, the inferior medial genicular nerve, and uh, the subpatellar plexus. So we use the four ablation zones that are the same. We also expanded to the lateral uh, portion, uh, the recurrent fibular nerve and, 
the, the lateral innervation of that, plus we have more ablation zones across uh, the subpatellar plexus and includes nerves of the vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, the articular branch. So we, uh, we expand that, but in general, the, the target volumes and the targets, the target volumes will be bigger. The targets will be exactly the same as conventional genicular ablation zones. Excellent. Excellent. Well, great. Other questions at all? We'll have to check if there are any questions from the, uh, from the chat room on, on Zoom, but uh, we'll get, possibly get back to you on that in a second. Okay. Other comments, uh, Doug? So I uh, hope you guys learned a little bit of something. This has been a, a great addition to our practice, for, especially with nerve variation and for consistency of great results. This has been a very good addition for us. So I encourage you to try out the large volume uh, ablation zones. And the best thing about what I just demonstrated is this can be used with whatever ablation techniques and, and machines that you have existing with, the, with existing probes. So you, there's nothing to add on except for the new needle with the larger ablation zone. A uh, couple questions from uh, online. Can you hear me, Doug? Yes. Uh, was that can you use this electrode for brain ablations? Uh, that was one question. So I'm going to take brain ablations to mean Gaussian gangling ablations. So I'll give you this, the definitive answer of I don't know. So the standard RF and doing ablation zones, we do at least a moderate amount of trigeminal ganglion, some sphenopalatine ganglion ablations. And all of the data that has been written about these two techniques are done with standard RF. So whenever it comes to doing ablations of the sphenopalatine ganglion and the trigeminal or Gaussian ganglion, uh, so Gaussian, for example, I do, uh, I do 60 for 90, 60 degrees at 90 seconds times three to get V2 and V3. And that's, that's what I do because one of the things that we're uh, really concerned about is the dreaded complication of anesthesia dolorosa. I mean, that's... Uh, suicide type pain. And I, I don't want to try to experience, experiment with new techniques, larger ablation volumes uh, in and around areas like this that have been worked out over the course of decades. So uh, that may be something we can do in the future, but right now that's the single area, and this is a very good question by the way, that's the single area that I resort to, to standard RF. That's the only area that I do standard RF anymore. Excellent. And uh, last question. Uh, who uh, manufactures the needle? Uh, it's the, the maker of the needle uh, is Stratus Medical. The needle is called, it's a Nimbus needle. Okay. They have a cloud theme. Nimbus, ne Nimbus needle by Stratus. Nimbus needle by Stratus. Excellent. Well, awesome, Doug. Thank you very much. That was a great presentation and, and demonstration there. Uh, so we'll move on to our uh, next uh, live video feed and demonstration uh, with Dr. Rich in, in a little